It's valve adjustment time, valve lash adjustment time to be specific. On the uh, fairly new Integra motor, uh, all motor build. So what we're doing now is we're doing the exhaust side here. I've got some long feeler gauges. And this one's got a little bit too much drag on it. So essentially what you want is you want enough space in between to where you can put that feeler gauge but you don't want it to I would say struggle going in and passing through to the other side um, you can probably see that a little bit better there um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use a special tool to do this and uh, this one is the 10 millimeter version and the not so professional way of doing it I guess is using a 10 millimeter socket putting a uh, flathead screwdriver through it and holding the uh, the socket with a pair of vice grips this tool isn't expensive at all so you're better off just buying the correct tool for the job it lets you see uh, it has a cutout and it lets you see where the uh, the flathead is and that's how you're basically going to do your adjustment so you want to put the tool over the nut and then you want to put the flathead into the slot that's cut out uh, on the actual uh, shaft itself or on the stud itself and then all you have to do really is crack it loose while holding both pieces and you want to basically try to keep your flathead <clears throat> in the same position it was because then it will be less work to actually you know make that fine fine adjustment so once you have that off you want to leave the tool in there and you want to slowly loosen or tighten depending on whether your uh, clearance is too tight or too loose while you're going back and forth with the feeler gauge and every slight turn like probably like a twentieth of a turn you'll feel uh, an actual difference and what you want is you don't want tightness you want kind of a happy medium between the feeler going through um, and not getting stuck but also to have a little bit of a drag there to m ensure that there's not too much of a gap so let's see here that one feels a lot better there you can almost hear like a little squeal or a little burp almost as you're going by so that feels good to me there so again keep the flathead where it is because that's your you know ultimately your adjustment there I'm gonna switch hands here and while I'm holding this static we're gonna be tightening the nut around it and I'd say snug I mean nothing too crazy so now once you, that is tightened you're gonna take your feeler again and this way you'll be able to pass it all the way through and you can probably get a better idea here of what's going on. I'm going to try to undo this real quick for you. And you can see the feel it gauge as it passes through. And then next up is this side. Now this side is a little bit different. This one's too, a little too tight I'd say. You can see the difference. That'll be good to actually see in the video. That one's too tight, and where this gap is, it's actually trying to push the feeler this way because there is, you know, a thin coat of uh, film, a thin coat of lubricant on it. In this case, it's Royal Purple HPS. But uh, on this one, you see how it kind of glides through? You can hear a noise. This one, it's instantly trying to shoot it over to the side. I mean, I can keep it straight. It's got a bit too much drag on it and that's why we're doing it and this motor is fairly new um, it was only built a few thousand miles ago so we're uh, readjusting the valves since everything was brand new out of the box upon building so um, I will uh, adjust the next one for you let me just set the camera up here I'm trying to get a good angle for everybody hopefully that's good alright so, we've got our feeler gauge in. 
Now you can only go so far because you need room for your tool to fit in there. But while you're loosening and while you're adjusting, you want to do it with the actual feeler gauge in. It would only make sense. So we'll set our tool up here. All right, that's down there now. We're on our flat head here. And we actually think on this one we get to slide around. Because you see this stud, I can already tell it's going to tap that. And that might not be enough to break it loose. The good thing with this tool is that swaps that way. So it gives you a little bit more dexterity, I guess you could say. So we're going to crack that guy loose. He's loose, but we kept the flat head static. We didn't move this. So what we're going to do now, start testing with our feeler. And the nut itself we can kind of keep. We're going to be adjusting the flathead primarily. So we'll loosen that up, loosen it up. I can already feel the difference, and you can see how much we've moved it. Not much. And then my test, you can almost tell by sound. I mean, you're going to be going by feel too, but the sound should be similar between the two. And this one we're going to go a little bit by feel because the amount of lubricant between might be a little slightly different as well. Tighten this guy up a little bit, see how we go. I think I'm going to try right there. Hold you in place, tighten you down. Take the whole setup out and repeat. Let's see how this goes. I think we actually need to get that guy a tiny bit tighter. It's a little too loose. there. Go back a little bit. Let's try that out. See how even these are now. Feels pretty damn even to me. So, this one's done. Then I keep a chart when I'm doing it, just so that way I'm not backtracking, you know, second guessing myself as to if I missed one, since there are a lot of adjustments on this particular motor. So, what I'll do is I'm going to be now doing the intake side. The intake side is a little bit different. And uh, just as a precursor to it, for this particular motor, I took the motor, uh, I took the, uh, the driver's side wheel out so I could have access to the crank pulley, used a 19mm uh, socket on the crank pulley, and that's how I'm turning the engine over. But you want to make sure your socket is set to reverse since this motor, in particular the V18C1, rotates counterclockwise versus clockwise. So um, as soon as you start rotating it, you're going to see your cam lobe right here. Basically, when this guy is pointing out, cam lobe is shaped similar to I would say almost like an egg um, you want for the for the correct adjustment you want it on the round part and you have about say like a half of the uh, cam lobe that is you know perfectly round or so and then the rest of it starts to protrude outwards for your actual uh, cam profile 
So you want it on the round part. That's where you're going to be doing the adjustment. And with the the, uh, the cantaloupe kind of pointing outwards towards the top, using your uh, your rails here as a guide, you can get you know both ends. So the next one we're going to be doing is the intake side for uh, you know cylinder four. But uh, if you got any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. And uh, yeah, this is uh, part of the uh, valve adjustment on a uh, Acura Integra for the uh, B18C1 engine. Um, this engine in particular, fully built all motor, high compression, around 12 and a half to one. So enjoy, and uh, hopefully this video helps you out.